So, what happened to Eminem's D12? Let's let's go. Dirty Dozen. Stands for Dirty Dozen. Six in the group, but we have uh, two identities. I was Slim Shady back then, but but I was also Eminem. I'm Swift, A.K.A. Swifty McVeigh. Well, I'm proof. Big proof of we be fit. Kaniva, that's my rap name. That's why I go by. I don't really go with Rondell Bean. That's my that's my alias. Bazaar. Alias uh, Peter Ash Bazaar. Kana is just, of course my my name in, in D12. And my alias is uh Mr. Porter, which is I got a lot of different aliases. Depends on what bar you catch me at and what drink I'm drinking. D12. A Detroit-based rap group fronted by Eminem formed in the mid-1990s and rose to mainstream prominence in the early 2000s. Both of their albums Devil's Night and D12 World went platinum and their single My Band reached number one on the rhythmic top 40. But as time passed, the group slowly became less active and in 2018, Eminem released the apology track to his D12 members titled Stepping Stone, which ends with the bar, it's not goodbye to our friendship, but D12 is over. D12 was one of the hugest rap groups of the aughts. They were all super talented and came with a cosign from the highest selling rapper of all time. Despite this, none of them gained any traction to solo acts. So what went wrong? I mean, none of them except for Eminem. <laughs> but like, D12 was fire. Like, my band. Like, yeah, my band. Whenever, when they made band, like when they made Blue and Yellow Purple Hills or pills they made like two variants of their songs and they dropped it but the clean version is what they made the video out of like that's genius that, that's genius but you know it's six of you and there's always going to be the credit given to one person so unfortunately yeah yeah. As a group, D12 had gone through an inordinate amount of tragedies and hardships. In 1999, Bugs, one of the MCs on the roster, was murdered at a picnic. Then in 2006, Proof, another member of D12, was fatally shot. Eminem has cited Proof's death as one of the main turning points that led to the group falling apart, rapping, I just noticed the oomph was gone when we go in the booth. Because the truth is, the moment that Proof died, so did the group. A decent chunk of D12's trajectory can be traced in Stepping Stone. By the time that D12 released their first album, Devil's Night, in 2001, the group consisted of Eminem, Proof, Bazaar, Swifty McVeigh, Mr. Porter, and Caniva. By then, Eminem was a household name and lightning rod of controversy, functioning as the perfect boogeyman for the parents of Bush era Middle America. Every member of D12 shared Eminem's penchant for provocative, controversial lyrics and graphically crude and dark humor. The psychedelic, yeah. hardcore drug anthem Purple Pills feels like a dare instructor's worst yeah. nightmare, and explicit sexual tracks like Nasty Mind and Pimp Like Me had the kind Bro, Devil's Night? Fire. Kind of rampant, tongue-in-cheek, misogynistic humor that you'd frequently only hear at comedy club open mic nights. The album is dark and upsetting, but frequently brilliant. Every member of the group effectively used their platform to introduce themselves to mainstream audiences as talented dark and upsetting more like dark and fantastic this is this is what birthed a lot of our fucking music groups today or like back then you know because look 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 we had asap mob Like the ASAP mob, we had the ASAP mob, right? That this is what we had. We had the ASAP mob. We had the Raider Clan. I'm typing one hand. Just fucking deal with it. Okay, so we got Raider Clan with Space Ghost Pussy and fucking Denzel Curry, bro. 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 That type of shit was inspired. Like, D12 inspired these groups. These groups didn't happen until after D12 was like, was like not, not as consistent as they were. Like after their second album with D12. Okay, so 
Devil's Night was the first one. Uh, Eminem's re-up was like the third one. And then D12, D12 The World was like the second one. So like when they made this one, and then they made Eminem's The World and they had added more people and they stopped for a while, that's when these other groups started popping up. Literally, these, this alone inspired a lot of that, a lot of rappers, a lot of rap groups. Talented lyrical supervillains who could eat up any beat, and the album was a hit. The success of the album earned D12 a spot on the Warp Tour, which they ultimately were kicked off of after members of the group got into a physical fight with Esham over lyrics insulting Eminem's daughter. During the three-year period between Devil's Night and D12 World, D12 appeared on When the Music Stops on the Eminem Show and the Tech 9 song She Devil, as well as on the official soundtracks for 8 Mile and Barbershop. Despite all this traction, they still seemed to be stuck in Eminem's shadow, touring without him while he recorded his 2004 album Encore. On My Band, the first single from D12 World, and the group's biggest radio hit, they parody and playfully wink at Eminem, constantly hogging their spotlight. D12 World had the same mixture of goofball energy and horror movie-esque violence that made Devil's Night a success. It ended up selling even more than Devil's Night, going double platinum. This is when members of the group knew it was time to branch out and use this momentum for their solo careers. Bizarre, as reflected in his name, was by far the biggest oddball in the group, with his gross-out humor and overall absurdity cranked up to 11. In 2000, That shit was cranked up to 25, let's be honest. This man is wild. Five year released his solo album Handicap Circus under Sanctuary Urban. In Stepping Stone, Eminem praises Handicap Circus's lead single, Rockstar, calling it the sh and taking blame for not helping to make it more of a huge hit. The album received mediocre reviews, with critics wondering if Bazaar's over the top humor and horrorcore sensibilities are meant to be only ingested in small doses. But despite bad critical reception, Handicap Circus was entertaining, creative, and genuinely funny. That same year, Proof released his sophomore solo album Searching for Jerry Garcia under Iron Fist Records. Like Handicap Circus, a tribute to Jerry Garcia released on the 10-year anniversary of his death, it had a rugged, underground feel to it. It received critical praise. It's worth noting that neither of the albums were released by Shady Records. Neither of these albums came close to the same sales as the D12 details, but in their defense... Bro, honestly, to make their shit blow up more, it should have been under Shady Records. That's kind of fucked up by by Mr. Slim Shady himself, Eminem. But, you know, I mean, it is a business, but I say you got to take care of yours before you take care of others. But, you know, yeah. Neither seemed like they were aiming to. Handicap Circus was far too strange, silly, and dark for Bizarre to seemingly be trying to create something mainstream. And searching for Jerry Garcia with its unapologetic avoidance of pop singles and out-of-the-box approach was perhaps too creative and intellectual for the palette of a mainstream audience. Eminem's shadow over D12 continued to grow. When Eminem wasn't a part of their concerts, it wasn't uncommon for teenagers to get bored and heckle D12 shows when they realized M wasn't going to come on stage. D12 took this as motivation to bring the house down, Dickhead. determined to not let being stuck in Eminem's shadow crush their spirits. In April 2006, Proof was killed and things slowly began to fall apart for the group. After appearing on some tracks on the 2006 Shady Records compilation album, The Re-Up, they went on a four-year hiatus. Today, despite over a decade of chatter about a third studio album, the project remains unfinished and stuck in the vault, with no foreseeable plans to ever release it. In 2008, D12 came out of their hiatus and released the mixtape The Return of the Dozen. I mean, it doesn't, it just doesn't feel right without proof, you know? It, it, I mean, I listened to it because I was a big fan, right? It didn't feel right. It didn't feel right because like there's there's just this lingering there's just this lingering feeling that there's something that is missing mostly without eminem's involvement as he was working on his relapse album three years later they released a follow-up mixtape the return of the dozen part two once again mostly without eminem's involvement since he was touring the mixtape featured the return of fuzz scooter an original d12 member who left in 1999 Around 2010, the group had recorded the song Hit Me With Your Best Shot for Eminem's recovery album, which ultimately didn't make the cut. In 2014, they appeared on the newer Shady Records compilation album, Shady XV, and released their last mixtape in 2015 titled The Devil's Night Mixtape. But with Eminem mostly absent from their songs, eyes weren't on them anymore, and D12 seemed to be stuck in a musical purgatory, wondering what to do next. In 2017, they officially broke up and everyone split up to pursue their solo careers. 
Mr. Porter became Eminem's hype man for live performances and appearances, and one of M's go-to producers. He has since released multiple EPs and an instrumental album, but never an official full-length solo record. Mr. Porter seems to be more than happy as a successful producer and busy hype man, uninterested in the type of suffocating superstardom that Eminem has, preferring to stay out of the spotlight. Swifty McVeigh has stated, You know what? I respect it because I would rather be that too. You know, having a whole bunch of people just, just be... I'm not, a whole bunch of fans are not really your fans. Half of them are actually your fans and they wish well for you. The other half are just hoping that you fail. Which I'm glad that I'm just starting off streaming. Like I'm glad that I have like three or four people, maybe even like one or two people coming in. Like, I'm glad that I'm that point right now because, like, if I was, like, at 13,000 streamers per day, like, Speed or Aiden, I know I'll be going fucking crazy because, like, well, actually, I wouldn't because I'll handle it a whole lot differently than other people because there's things called turning off my phone and computer. But, you know, you feel me? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Just because I'm, I make a character and I portray that character, like I can go out here and I can, I can turn into Chad, dude. Like I can really just go ahead and say my name is Chad, and I can go in and I can go to the frat parties with fucking white claws and five bad bitches, and we can just go ahead and go. But you know, we have this thing called life that we have to live, dude. But you know, yeah. So that's where I'm at that's that's where he's at he's glad that he's at the point that he's at but he don't want to pursue no more because he doesn't want to fall into a hole respect under the radar but remains highly active and has released a large and more than solid collection of solo mixtapes nine of which you can find on the main streaming services his most recent project is a collaboration with the group ad empire simply titled ad empire on the intro track, Swifty makes it clear that he still has nothing but love for his fellow D12 members and that he doesn't harbor an ounce of bitterness. Kanava has released four studio albums since 2014, all of them consistently good with the same skilled rapping that made him such a valuable contribution to the group. On Underdog Salute, from his 2020 album Alpha Underdog, he also reiterates that D12's breakup was amicable and that he still respects and supports the other members. Throughout the past 15 years, Bizarre has... I mean, his back-to-backs, like, against, like, other, when they do, like, one bar here, one bar there, when, like, him and, uh, what's the name, used to, like, intertwine their lyrics together, bro, that shit was fire. Yeah. He, it was, it was Eminem, and then it was him. Those are my two favorite rappers in that group consistently release new albums and mixtapes, none of which have received much attention. He has been straying further and further away from mainstream sensibilities and deeper into his own twisted world where he embraces the scatological and the morose, crafting songs that make the darkest Slim Shady tunes feel like a Disney musical, and typically going too far. His track, I Love the Babies, was singled out by rap critics as unforgivably repulsive and abhorrent. Bazaar has officially developed a sense of humor that was far too cruel and upsetting to be accessible for anyone but himself. Songs like where he raps from the perspective of the disgraced comedian about in women's drinks feel more lazy than subversive. Bizarre's demented sense of humor, once his greatest attribute, has become his biggest weakness and his own worst enemy. Which leads us to one of the reasons why- Bizarre reminds me of, uh, what's his, what's his name? Fucking, just watched a video about it. Uh, fucking Steve something, something Steve. Scuba Steve. You know what? Fuck it. I'm not, I'm not even gonna search it up, bro. There's no point. Why D12 has lost its mainstream mojo. Shock humor. While D12 was always inventive, clever, and genuinely entertaining with their outrageously offensive jokes, shock humor all in all is very much a product of a bygone era and its cultural peak in the 2000s. While there are obviously mainstream exceptions today, like Dave Chappelle keeping it alive, shock humor has yeah. mostly dried up as a cultural trend. Now it's seen as somewhat worn and played out. While a spike in offensive comments and behavior has happened with those in power, shock humor now feels like it's aligning with those in power as opposed to fighting it. The generation that grew up on D12 is the same generation of suburban kids who grew up on South Park and Family Guy, Sling. Yeah, I'm not suburban, but you know, yeah, I, I understand where he's coming from. I grew up on this, but not too much, you know, I was 
I was like just outside of it. I was just outside of it. I was born in 2002. I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not bringing chat out again, but you know, I was born in 2002. So like I I I was right there. I was right there when they first did it. They dropped like in 1990 something. 1998, I believe it was. That's when they first started dropping because that's when Eminem first started getting popularity. I am totally wrong. And slurs on Xbox no, Live were exposed to the darkest recesses of the internet forums. The 2000s were a time when being disgusted and appalling were exciting attributes for teenagers, particularly suburban teenagers. This era has died, and D12 was an unfair casualty of it. Once again on Stepping Stone, Eminem blames himself for not hooking up D12 with other big artists and helping them network. I mean, honestly, it's, it's his fault, but not his fault at the same time. Bizarre's career would have died no matter what, because, like, this man was just... He, he built himself on being the nastiest motherfucker in the group. Literally. And if you don't believe me, go back and listen to this shit. He prides himself on that shit. In music videos and everything. Every single song that he's made has been him showing that he's the nastiest motherfucker in the group. I think of all the trips to BET and the rappers we could have politicked with and got you some features. Stepping Stone makes it clear that M feels guilt for leaving his D12 comrades out to hang and dry, yelling at himself in the climactic third verse. Is this the kind of karma you get for turning your back on Busy Kanava and Swift? Eminem, while being one of the greatest rappers alive, has a long history of not doing enough to elevate his shady record signee. But there's no, like, honestly, honestly, you can't, you gotta protect, you gotta make sure yours is good. You gotta make sure yourself is good. Your mental health, bruh, you gotta make sure you're, you're good, bruh, because, like, you, you're just gonna go fucking crazy if you're gonna hook up other people or, like, try to get somebody else in this situation when you're not in a, a good enough situation to fortunately he had his own record yeah he could have helped them a lot more in their careers and be more successful but he had more stuff to do yeah yeah he signed them but they still got managers and shit the managers should have did all that but they should have produced their first album solo connected through shady records but you know it's the past <laughs> so we're gonna keep well, 50 going cent is an obvious exception artists like yellow wolf obi trice bobby creekwater stat quo and cassius seem to take a backseat to eminem's own albums at the expense of their careers it's worth noting that current shady record artists Grip and Westside Boogie might not be getting the exposure and promo they deserve and could potentially get more attention if they were on a label like Def Jam or Top Dog. This isn't a diss on Eminem. He's proven himself to be a pure artist, just uninterested in being a businessman. And unfortunately for D12, a decent chunk of M's fan base is white people in middle America who don't typically listen to rap. Eminem himself referenced this on Chloroseptic Remix when he says he cut his fan base in half when he dissed President Trump. In the mid 2000s, I usually hate rap, but I love Eminem was an extremely common phrase in the suburbs. Simply put, these types of Eminem fans weren't interested enough in hip hop to follow D12 solo careers. So with the death of proof rocking the group to its core, mixed in with Eminem's spotty history of promoting his signees and a white fan base in middle America that didn't care enough about rap to seek out the solo work of any D12 member who wasn't named Marshall, it's no wonder D12 dissipated. But no matter how you spin it, D12 captured an era and they were nothing short of phenomenal MCs. You know, and we'll yeah, always be friends, man. We've always been friends. So we were kids, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So we'll always be good on that aspect, you know? And I want to help them do whatever. With Damn, bro. That's crazy. That's crazy.